Hello, I'm John K. Coyle, the Time Guy, and welcome to episode three of Beyond the Podium, where we explore backstories from the Olympic Games. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite, no, my favorite speed skater of all time, Eric Haydn. Uh, the first time I met Eric, actually, uh, a few minutes after we met, his cat peed on all my clothes and he cheerfully washed them. I'll circle back to why that happened in a minute. Let, first, let's talk about why Eric is the greatest speed skater of all time. I think that's with our argument. Uh, the reason he is is because in 1977, a 17-year-old Eric Hyden went to the Junior World Championships where he won. He proceeded to then go to the Senior World Championships for the All-Around, which he won, and then to the Senior World Sprint Championships, which he won. Uh, the next year, 1978, he did the exact same thing. World champion jun junior, uh, world senior champion in all-around, world, world senior champion in sprint. 79, he's uh, 19 now. He's too old for junior worlds. He wins the all-around sprint and all-around worlds. Uh, 80, he wins the all-around sprint and then goes to the Olympic Games where he proceeds to win the 500, the 1,000, the 1,500, the 5,000, and the 10,000 meters, all five events, all with Olympic records and finally setting a world record in the 10,000 meters. This guy is unbelievable. Now, uh, let's just consider how crazy that is. That is like Usain Bolt winning the 200 and then going to win the 800, the 1500, the 5K, and the 10K. Never going to happen. And it's never going to happen again in speed skating either. So why was I with Eric where his cat peed on my clothes? Well, uh, Stanford, when I got into Stanford, we were on the same cycling team, by the way. Eric and I were both on 7-11 back in 85 and 86. I had seen him, but I had never really talked to him. Uh, but then when I got into Stanford, Eric was there studying to get his medical degree. And Stanford very uh, obligingly uh, put me as a prospective freshman rooming and boarding with uh, the great Eric Hyden. So I flew into California and I uh, took a taxi, I think, or maybe he picked me up, to his house, whereupon uh, put setting my bag down and exploring a little bit, five minutes later we find out that his cat had peed on all my clothes. So that's why he had to help me wash my clothes. I waited what seemed like a polite interval and then I asked him, hey, uh, can, can I see a gold medal? And he, he did this thing. He sort of scratched his head, and then he thought, and he said, yeah, okay, follow me. So I followed him into his bedroom. We got on all fours, and he was digging around on the floor, whereupon he suddenly produced a black sock with a heavy object dangling in it. And he said, here you go. And so I pulled it out, and I got to see one of the five gold medals. I asked him uh, right there, uh, so why are your medals on the floor of your closet in black socks? And his answer was a good one. He said, well, I, I figured that's probably the last place anybody would, anyone would look. So I'm not giving away any secrets. They are now at the Smithsonian, so they're safe. Uh, nobody's going to steal them there. So why, why else is Eric the greatest ever? Well, here's something else that happened in that trip. A few days later, uh, after I arrived, he said he needed to run an errand. And uh, so we got in the car and we drove to uh, the stadium where the 49ers played. And this was at the height of Joe Montana's, like, famousness, right? So we parked, well, we had to park, like, two and a half miles away because we couldn't get near the stadium because there's a game going on. And he says to me, and I remember the words, let's trot. Uh, trotting for Eric Hyden is like a five and a half, six minute mile. I got dropped on the trot. Uh, eventually I caught him, and he was up at the fence. He was going to exchange a package with an agent, sports agent, who actually was Joe Montana's sports agent. So the game was just getting over. All these people were pouring out. He sees the agent, he hands him whatever. Joe Montana's walking to go sign some autographs. He sees Eric Hyden, immediately changes the tra trajectory, walks over, shakes his hand. That's the kind of, of company that this guy can keep because of these amazing things. So, uh, you know, here's, here's another interesting story about Eric. I heard this in 1981, so it's a little bit fuzzy memory, but I went to Lake Placid to compete, and I stayed at this really strange boarding house. And the lady there, which she was kind of a crazy lady that ran it, uh, was telling stories about Eric. And she sort of told the story with a twinkle in her eye of the last night of the games, the night before Eric's 10,000 meters. He apparently sort of left the Olympic Village to get some quiet and uh, freedom. And he was staying there the last few nights. And the story, as she tells it anyway, was I kept checking on him and he wasn't home at one, he wasn't home at two, he wasn't home at three, he wasn't home at four. And then finally at 5 a.m., he was finally there. And then I checked on him in the morning and I had to shake him awake. 
because he was oversleeping for his 10,000 meters. He almost missed it. He overslept for his 10,000 meters. She said later the police came by and they were inquiring about the whereabouts of Eric. And I said, I didn't know. Apparently some, she said, this is her words, some flags were missing, Olympic and uh, US flags. And I kind of noticed some folded up in the closet where he was staying. So how true is that story? I don't know if I know, um, but here's one last story that I know is true. Told to me about five years ago from one of the coaches uh, at US Speed Skating. Uh, Eric's the team doctor. He's now he got his medical degree. He's a team doctor for US Speed Skating. And he, uh, a few years ago, they do a ride from Colorado Springs. They call it the Divide Ride. And they ride from uh, the US Olympic Training Center to the Continental Divide and back. And it's about 10,000 feet or so, I believe, of climbing about 100 miles, it's a long slog in the saddle of the bike. And Eric, you know, he didn't ride in the car, he actually rode with the athletes. And so sure enough, he's with the group and they ride to the top of the divide and he makes it there with the top three or four guys and then rides down. And then the, the last part of this ride, which I remember very clearly, is this long slog from Pueblo, like 20, 25 miles back to Colorado Springs. And there's always a headwind for some reason. And uh, so Eric's still with the group and they're, you know, they're riding a pace line up front because the headwind and then this like, Four guys, and then three guys, and then two guys, and then it's just Eric. And as my friend told me, uh, Eric eventually took the whole team, the last like 10 miles, back to the U.S. Olympic Training Center, whereupon my friend asked him, so um, do, you, do you think you could have dropped them? And he paused, and he looked at him, smiled a little bit, and said, yeah, probably. 52 years old, crushing the best 20-something athletes known to man in the US, that's Eric Hyden, that's his incredible power. 29 inch thighs, I mean, that's the same size as my waist when I skated, I, I, unbelievable. So uh, that's the story of Eric. Uh, thanks for joining me for episode three of Beyond the Podium. Tomorrow, I'm gonna talk to you about this guy, Brian Hansen, amazing athlete, third Olympics. I actually used to coach him as well. And each day we're gonna share more and more about what's to come, and then when I'm over in Pyeongchang, I'll be interviewing athletes directly and talking specifically about their perceptions of time and training in the events uh, and how, how it all works together. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.